computer. Yes. So I, it's so important to me as I, I age out of the young person demographic that I understand hitting record on a podcast is vital and wildly important. I can't tell you I've recorded probably five podcasts that were amazing, life-changing for me. And, and I didn't, I didn't, didn't record it. I yeah. didn't save the footage. I, I relate to that as often when I'm, you know, recording with somebody or when I do like a Joan club call and I record for people who's, who've missed it, somebody will have to remind me. Don't forget to record, Granny. Granny. Hold on. I'm just going to stop you right there. Tell me about the Joan Club. I feel okay, like an so out outsider. It's not, you know, it's so funny. Every time I mention it, people are like, what are you talking? Like, it's not, it's not a thing that was like announced or, or it, honestly, what happened was during the pandemic, like, or during the lockdown 2020, I was like, my nervous system was destroyed via Twitter uh, formerly known as Twitter. And I just had to get off of it. And, but I didn't want to lose the community that I felt like I had built with a lot of fandom, um, supernatural fandom. And so a, a lot of people that I was in contact with, I was like, what do you think about if we started a thing that was specifically geared towards women being able to unabashedly talk about their, um, successes, uh, because so often when I think that women get a chance to go, oh my God, if I can like, I got a raise or whatever, people are, you know, there there can be bad connotations with that, unfortunately. So I wanted to open a space where people could talk about their hits and misses, their their struggles. And it was just basically a community. So it's it was a, a disc, it's essentially a Discord channel. And I dip in and out of there multiple times a day. Um, it's full of women, um, and non-binary folks who just go on there to talk about their challenges. They receive support. They get like, you know, applause when something really amazing happens to them. And then we, once a month, I mean, these days, this this month, I missed it for a number of reasons, but then I'll do like a, a Zoom call with folks. Um, and then we'll just kind of talk about our, our, our months. And we're doing a Zoom call next week because there's it, for those of you who are into astrology there's it's eclipse season right now and i don't know if you've been feeling particularly uh trodden upon but uh <laughs> we're like uh gonna talk about uh what we are experiencing and what we can do to move forward so it's just it's a little bit of a smaller avenue for me to connect with people um that's also moderated um and yeah, people have to be responsible for what they say. And that's not always the case on social media. So I'm on social, I'm on Instagram um, and it's fine, but there's just such an opportunity for people to just uh, drop shitty things and run. And there isn't that opportunity in the Joan Club. You have to be responsible for what you say. The good and the bad, good and the bad. I love that. And I want to yeah. ask you, so this eclipse season, does this and forgive my ignorance you know i'm it's I'm, okay. gonna be... I, I'm also not an astrologer so i'm gonna say things that don't aren't right as well <laughs> is this something that affects men as well or is it a strictly oh yes okay it affects the entire world and i know people will be like uh, astrology and people roll their eyes at it but it's like the the moon effect it's scientific proof that the moon affects us the astrology of the world affects us and once you like really dig into it it's actually kind of fascinating in a nerdy sciencey way of like oh pluto is in mars right now maybe that's why i feel like punching a wall or whatever it is it's very helpful but when it's eclipse season um you're kind of just supposed to rest and everything is kind of coming at you there's big endings big beginnings um so we just had a lunar eclipse on the 25th and on april 8th we have a solar eclipse and they kind of are in six month patches. So something that happened back in October, started back in October, is kind of reaching a pinnacle point, not a beginning or an ending necessarily, but around the 25th of March, which was just this week. Um, but the, the, you know, just like the moon does shit to the ocean, right? Like our bodies are, are full of water. And so they're going to do things to us, to our brains, to, to, they're just going to make us feel tired, maybe a little weepier, maybe a little punchier. And so you're just kind of supposed to, be, it's helpful to be aware of these things, just as it is for women with our hormones of going, oh, I'm in my luteal phase. 
maybe that's why I'm crying at a cell phone commercial or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, it's not to judge yourself. It's just to go, okay, it's nice to have a little explanation for things. Yeah. And I honestly, I want to use the explanation with my wife, Mandy. I want to be like, hey, it's eclipse season. And I think there's things going on in my body that make me act like this. But mm -hmm. what, what do you, what's your advice to the world that doesn't want to believe this type of stuff affects their emotions? Because I, I do, I think it's real. I am getting more spiritual every day I'm on this planet and I'm seeking, seeking um, kind of things to better myself that are in the environment. I want to try to get away from any medicine and try to use nature as medicine. And I, on the 25th this week, something major happened. It was kind of a negative and a positive combined in one. And it was definitely the end of something. Um, and now I'm kind oh. of moving forward in this, this next part of this uh, moment and it could be coming to a head right around April 8th. So like I'm, Trippy. I'm wildly fascinated by this stuff yeah. and you're kind of my only friend that we, we kind of go here and we talk about this stuff. And uh, what, what do you, what do you say to the world that just avoids it? That's just like, nah, you just get up and you drink your coffee and you put on your shoes and you go to work and that's just what it's going to be. It's not about your feelings. I think if at some point we adjust, to what's going on in nature and and let it be relative to what we're feeling i think we'll have a better understanding am i am i right or am i wrong yeah and that's essentially what i was going to say and i think that as i would say with anything that you feel like viscerally resistant to i would question that i would question why why are you why why do you have emotions behind why you want to do a thing or don't want it if you want to just give or take fine. That's fine. Some people just don't have capacity to be like, oh, I can't wrap my brain around that. I thousand percent get that. But if you're like, oh, it's so fucking dumb. Uh, you just go, <laughs> what, what's, what's that about? What's going on there? Because I do, especially men to generalize things really don't want to embody kind of how they could be spiritually and really therefore physically connected to every piece of earth around them it's there's some there there is a disconnect there again huge generalization for men about um kind of embodying these kind of sacred the sacredness within us right uh, not to go too deep down this rabbit hole but um i think that i found again like around 2020 my 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 dad passed away in 2021 very quickly and then soon after my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And I felt like I had to be kind of a caregiver for every single family member in my life, which is not true. My brothers are quite amazing with my parents, but um, they also have no spiritual practices. And so when you're questioning like, why is this happening? Or where does everybody go? Or just shit like that. It's so helpful to have kind of this awareness of we're all, we're all connected. You know, Jose, my partner is very in tuned with, um, everything kind of like he, he takes like a tarot class once a month yeah. and he just does it. Cause he's just like, he wants to know more about how we're connected to the universe. It's also very, I think very comforting as maybe some people find organized religion to be comforting. Um, but the the I, for instance uh uh i've made no secret of it of my love of psilocybin mushrooms yeah and uh if you do if you go down any kind of research studies about mushrooms you realize really how quite not not to be ironic quite magical mushrooms are yeah. um but there is something mushrooms have is called uh mycelium which is this um just like a computer um connections running un deep underneath the soil from each living thing that grows in the soil. And so if there is a tree that is dying, a mushroom will go and talk to the other tree and go, that bitch over there needs some water. And then that tree will bring through the mycelium some water. So mushrooms are a great example of really how, how we are all connected. And once you kind of sink into that, man, does it make it so much easier to move through this world of going like somebody's being a dickhead, you can go, oh, wow, I wonder what happened to them to act that way instead of then you um going ahead and kind of mirroring that and then passing that on and then passing that on if we all kind of just had a little perspective of everybody's experience 
um, God, it would be so much easier to move through the world. My butt yeah, is sweating I, right now. Okay. Listen, okay. good. Look at my face. Do you see how red this face is? This face Why? is red. Because I just got out of the sauna and I like oh, to the come, sauna. I knew I there like was a to come right in here with that same energy, but I can't put on powder because I'll just sweat right through it. So I just no, don't do it. I'm a red. And then you get monster. to go look at guys. I'm in the sauna. I'm in my workout here because I'm going to go for a workout after. But I did put on makeup, which I haven't done in a week. But I did that for you. Well, you look beautiful. And it's just it's amazing just to sit here and talk with you. I, I know, know it's like, you know, this is like partly a job except it's a job that i don't make any money and i get to choose all the lovely people that i talk to and ask questions and get in a conversation with and there's not enough of it this has been you know the the couple of episodes of i've done of mc on the mic and i got another one with my brother it's just so nice to sit and have long form conversation where i don't have an agenda or, or you don't have an agenda trying to get to a commercial or come from a commercial and 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 satisfy advertisers and i think it's wildly important and you talk, we have so much to talk about just based on what you just said number one yeah <laughs> alternative perspective gaining perspective challenging perspective is a fantastic thing we don't do enough of it we don't try to put ourselves in the opposite person's uh, uh, shoes and try to see the world or the predicament from their eyes mushrooms seems to be a real mental equalizer um and i'm not telling people out there to go run out and do mushrooms talk to your doctor talk to the right people not this bro scientist over here but there is something to be gained from getting out of your your constant mindset right of whatever it may be the constant rut wh whether you don't even think it's a rut you think this is my life this is how it's gonna go no that is that is the worst way to get in my opinion challenge yourself and you know through therapy i learned these three words that i always um kind of kind of lean on and that is uh perspective and then if you if you're able to adopt a perspective whether it's from a worker or a lover or whatever it may be adopt a perspective come to a compromise right and say hey i can't have all of what i want you can't have all of what you want let's let our perspectives come together compromise and then from that you get growth so like those three things of just a perspective compromise and growth is is how i try to hit every situation especially when i'm challenged by the many challenges that are career and a 20-year marriage and raising a son that's about to be nine years old and now he's changing into a different butterfly that i've never met before and it's like holy shit, i'm getting old my hair's getting gray my body's feeling different all these wild things it's okay if you allow in some pers perspective because it, 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 it gives you the ability to digest things differently and if you just eat the same food every day and you digest things the same way every day you might feel a certain way and that might feel safe and it might be uh in within your comfort zone but there's no growth there and there's no perspective growth there and i think that's what's fascinating about mushrooms and whether you are a old professional in mushrooms or just interested in hearing a conversation from brie and matt about mushrooms i think there's a lot of benefit and medicinally you see it opening up and changing lives yeah. from soldiers to ptsd people to just a a, a plethora of of different yeah. folks being affected by mushrooms so i always say i wish every american politician had to do and and this is pr probably you know people don't want me saying this type of thing but i would think that if all american politicians did a hero dose of mushrooms to the point <laughs> where yeah. it was too much yeah. they would have to gain a perspective to get through that moment and i think it would change them i think being locked into one way of thinking for too long is kind of where speaking just of the united states but how we got here and it's so unfortunate um and i don't mean to babble but if i don't tell you this other thing based on something you said earlier i'll let it go and it'll disappear into nowhere land uh, you mentioned something about the tides and the moon and the water and all these different things, the gravitational pull, all this stuff. There was, I listened to Jewel. Do you know Jewel, the singer? Mm -hmm. So I listened to Jewel on a podcast and it, it, during the time I was in a great, one of the ups and downs of depression. And so I was listening to her talk about suicide. And when she was a young girl, she sat on a beach and she had a bottle of pills. And this is obviously the summarized version. And she sat ready to 
take her own life. And she sat where the water was crashing down on her feet and the storm felt like it was closing in on her. And she looked at her bottle of pills and she sat and she sat and she sat and she didn't eat that bottle of pills. And then as time went on, the tide pulled back from her feet and it wasn't as violently crashing at her feet. And then there was three feet between her and the water and then 10 feet and then 20 feet. And then all of a sudden the sun came up and it was a new day. So in connection spiritually with everything you said, you know, about all these things that go on in the universe, tides change. They change for a reason. So do people allow your perspective to change and allow your your confidence in yourself to hang on to another moment and take another step forward be the reason you don't make a drastic or destructive decision. Is this making any sense or am I crazy? Yes. No, it's good. It's good. I'm just like in my brain making notes and all the things that I want to respond to. So responding to that experience with Jewel, I think it's a beautiful example of like, you know, I think it's, um, it can sound so trite to be like, just hang on. It's going to get better. Um, but the reality is that life is hills and valleys yeah. as is our careers, as is our relationship with our bodies, as there is our physicality of our bodies. Um, we're told the biggest load of shit when we're young is that the trajectory of our life is a ladder yeah. um, when it's not, it's ups and downs. And I heard something one day, which brought me such great solace as somebody who grew up with zero dollars and who will inherit zero dollars, probably less than zero dollars. And I'm just like, holy shit, like, am I the poorest person on the face of the planet? And I'm not. I just feel like that, especially living in Vancouver. But somebody I heard once said, the greatest thing you could give your child is not a house, is not a college fund. It is um, a healthy nervous system. Mm. Because then you give them the tools, just like we're struggling with or, or you know, successful with. Um, you give them the tools to navigate all of these hills and valleys for the rest of their life. And what better can you want for your child? And is it now, this is something I do, and I don't know if it's right, but I do it constantly. I, I point out the faults that I, when I make a bad decision or I say something I don't want to say, especially dealing with my son, I wish I was better about it with my wife. Obviously, you know, I'm, I talk very openly with you about where my marriage is or isn't. And I'm constantly trying to grow into a more whole human being as a partner in a marriage. But with my son, I tell him straight away, that wasn't the right choice I just made. That was not, I didn't, I didn't mean the way I said that, whether it's to him or something in the house, right? Like you say, you get irritated, you smash a counter, you punch a wall or... And I try to tell him right away that, hey, man, I don't really know how to explain this to you because it's happening to me real time. This is my first time also. This is my mm -hmm. first time being a dad, being a husband, being a man on earth. At least I think I could have been a woman, a dog, a bird, something before. I don't whatever your belief is spiritually. But for right now, I'm just figuring it out day by day. And I don't want to be judged on who I was yesterday. I want to be judged for who I am today. Ben Affleck says this great thing. I'm sure you heard it creatively from Goodwill Hunting. Matt Damon talks about it. Ben said, don't judge me on my, my bad creative decisions. Judge me on my good ones. I'm going to throw shit against the wall and see what sticks, but don't judge me on every piece of stinky shit. One of those things are going to grow a flower. And so I tell Macklin, I'm like, hey, I'm learning real time. I want you to have the freedom to say, dad, don't talk to me like that. Dad, you're being unpleasant. You know, and I never had that freedom. Right. And not that my dad did wrong or right. And you can choose to resent your parent for this or that or what they did or didn't do. He did the best he could at his first time raising me, taught me the person I don't want to be, taught me the person I do want to be, taught me the things I don't want to do, the things I do want to do by failing in front of my face. With Macklin, I, I try to keep an, a more open conversation where he can just, and he did. And Bree, let me tell you something. Like six months ago, a buddy of mine passed away and I was, in, I was just in a slump and I was in a slump so much so that I told Mandy, I go, I don't want to press past this. I want to sit in it and I want to feel it and I want to know what it feels like to hurt. And I got stuck there. 
I got stuck there to a point where Macklin one day we were doing soccer in the backyard and started walking up and he goes, dad, can I talk to you? And I like turned around, he was five feet behind me and he's like shaking and his face is red. And he's, I could tell that it was hard for him to ask that question. And I immediately wanted to cry. And so before we even got inside, we sat down outside and he said, dad, you can't be like this anymore. You're so unpleasant to be around and it's not fair. And like, we had this conversation and I didn't want to hear it in that moment. In that moment, I was like, I didn't say anything. I just let him talk. But inside I did the natural Matt Cohen thing was, was get angry and get defensive. But then I tried to get that perspective thing and go, man, there's a eight year old sitting down saying no more, no more of this. We have to, we have to, we have to get you back. We have to push you through. We have to help. And it's tearing him apart. And this little boy glossed over eyes, holding his tears in. Like if I filmed this, he would have won an Oscar for it. And he's just looking at me and his little hands are trembling and my heart is shaking and I don't know what to do. And I just grab him and hug him. And I, and I thanked him for having the courage to, to talk to me like that. But I don't know when, when you realize or you don't realize that this is what it's going to take. Like life, relationships, friendships, parenting, we've got to give each other the time and the space to fuck it up, figure it out, fuck it up again, and come back to earth as a better individual through, you know, the challenges of perspective. And so I, I hope this tangent is taking us somewhere, but I had to share that story. <laughs> so I, thank you for sharing that. I don't know if I've had a, a very similar, I can think of one time in the last year where I, I definitely snapped to Valentina. I'm not a snapper because I'm, I'm, as they say, I have a um, elite verbal acuity and I'm pretty good at communicating my thoughts before I get to a point of like snapping. Agreed. And, yeah. So, uh, but she, I remember her being so taken aback by it that she immediately started crying. And I was just like so, something, and it, you know, it had nothing to do with anything. It was like about video games or something. Um, but something in me just snapped. And then I went and talked to her and I did the same thing where I, I apologized. And I said, that has nothing to do with you. That has to do with me. But there is a fine line I find with parenting about, as you said, it is so important to, for our for us to realize about ourselves that we're we're not meant to get it right. We're not meant to be perfect. There is no end goal for life. And so while we want to keep getting better, I I don't like to describe it as getting better. I like to describe it as growing, learning, yeah. changing. Because I don't ever want to shame the person I am now or the person I was yesterday because she was doing her best. Um, and today she's doing her best and tomorrow she's going to do her best. And then tomorrow she's going to get new information. I don't want her to shame tomorrow's version. But for for our kids, I think I had this conversation with a few people that we work with. I do think it is important, like Valentina right now is so sick. She's sicker than I've ever seen her. Um, and she, she's almost, she's 10, 10 years old next week. And she, she's had a total sleep regression. So she's coming into our bed. She's coughing so much. And I haven't slept in turn in two weeks. So last night I got up and I was like, oh my God. So I got up in the middle of the night and you put Vicks vapor rub. You do like things that the doctor says to do. And I'm just like, she can see that. I'm just like, oh my God. And she's like, mom, I'm so sorry. Mm. And I was like, no, 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 no. I said, this is my job. You are never here to take care of me. I am always here to take care of you. I never, I think we should never let our children feel like it is their job to take care of us. We should, the best thing I think we can do for our kids is, is to, yes, like you said, display the idea that we are imperfect. Because I think the moment I saw that my, I remember the day that my mom sat me down and told me something very, very traumatic that happened to her. And I was in my twenties. And I remember just thinking, I'm not ready for this. Like I'm a little kid still, like I can't have this conversation with my mom, you know? And so I never want Valentina to kind of suddenly be awakened to the idea that I am a, 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 an imperfect human. I want her to be aware of that from the get-go, but I also want her to always feel safe within herself and within our relationship. Um, and so I try to make that clear of never going, like she never has to apologize to me for my discomfort. 
that's not her responsibility. That's mine. That's my emotional regulation that I need to work on or, you know, not display so heartily to her. But um, I do think that when it comes to parenting, I think that there's a new movement that wasn't around when our parents were parents, you know, or were parenting younger versions of ourselves. They were just, well, I can only speak for my parents. They were just doing their best, man, oh man. And I yeah. didn't see it when I was young. Like when I was young, I judged them. I remember I was always like, why can't we have this? Or why are you acting like this? And now I look back and I think about my mom specifically, who my dad was disabled. And so he was at home. He he like was the one that did the cooking and cleaning, but he was blind. And so there was there wasn't much that he could do, but he, you know, he did his best. We grew up on macaroni and cheese, you know, with frozen vegetables. Like that's that's how we grew up. And so I don't I remember being like, oh, we always gotta eat this, and everybody else I know has this and this. And my mom was working full time raising three children with a disabled partner. And I just now I look at that and I'm like, good, she's amazing. But at the time, I was just like, this is bullshit. How did I get this, you know, racket? Um, so it's it's a fine line between going, I want my daughter to feel safe, but I also want her to know like everybody is just doing their best. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's a good lesson. And I, it's, it's funny you, when, as you were saying that, and I was thinking back when, when Macklin was just born and Mandy was just about to give, give birth to Macklin. I remember Spate sitting me down and going, Hey man, just so you know. And I was telling him, I was like, it, it must've been after he was born. Cause I was so tired. And I was like, man, I'm so tired. When do you sleep? And he was like, I haven't slept in 11 years or whatever he said, yeah. <laughs> however his oldest son was. And he goes, there's not a day that goes by where I'm not trying to discipline or teach or something. But by the end of the day, I lay in bed awake at night and I, I analyze myself and I ask the questions. And I thought that was an important lesson for me to hear is to self-examine, right? Because self-examination is terrifying. People don't want to go, hey, am I living right? Am I eating right? Am I drinking right? Am I talking right? To, am I being well, a good Well, it's human? endless, right? Like the yeah. there is no answer to that. That's we're always seeking that. And there isn't really an answer. Yeah, and it's like if at the end of the day, you don't question yourself somewhat and nobody questions you at all, you're going to go on mm -hmm. with the singular perspective thinking, I got it right. My thinking is the way. And that is, again, how we got to this point in yeah, the great United States yeah. of America from <laughs> single minded thinking with lack of perspective. So challenge yourselves, people self examine. And, yeah. And, ask all the damn questions. Be I mean, curious. That's what I like to say. I always like to go when I hear an opinion uh, that's different than mine. I so I have like two Instagrams, um, one I've had forever and ever. And then another one I've had since I joined Supernatural, which is my public one. My private one is just friends and family. But I definitely when I, I post way more on that, and I'll definitely post things that I believe in. And when people call me on those things meaning when i say call me on them they go i have a different opinion than you sure and however they call me out on it i can trust that and i don't trust that i'm going to i'm going to then in eventually believe what they believe but i trust that this is a person that i love this is a person that i tr that i do trust and that i they're either calling me out on something that i need to check or they're going, I have a different opinion. I'd like for you to hear it. And then I do hear it because it is important to be curious in this world. It's important to go, what is that perspective about? Where did it come from? What is that person's experience in this life? Especially as, you know, a white woman, you're like, oh, I, I other than the oppression of being a woman, I, I am pretty easy compared to a lot of people in this world. So it's very interesting to listen to perspectives. Jose, for instance, you know, will never listen to, you know, perspectives that are similar to his own. Like when he listens to podcasts, they're always, they're almost always queer women. Yeah. Because he wants to expand his perspective. He doesn't want to have his thoughts and ideas reaffirmed to him. He wants to go, oh, I had no idea, you know? So I think that I, I try to do that as much as I can just to be curious about the world. You don't have to change your perspective 
but you can it is possible for two things to be true yeah and, and nobody I think, wants to hear that because we're all stuck in our in our you know our chamber of truth and belief and and a lot yeah. of people want to have everything that they think justified and everything that they eat and everything that they do like sure. me i'm as guilty as anybody else from trying to press my healthy you know biohacking lifestyle on people i hear myself talking and am annoyed by my own voice but it comes from a place of hey I've lifted myself out of whatever situation to this situation. This is how I did it. I just literally want to help. And then the other part is don't get married to your perspective or your ideas, right? Like believe in that marriage, believe in, man, I was taught this from logical people that have studied this and they explained it like this. And so now I believe like this, but I sat with Brie on a podcast and she opened my eyes to an alternative perspective that can shift, right? We don't have to just get married to one idea forever. And again, hate to say it, that's how we got here, right? We're yeah. married to singular ideas and, and the world is a vastly changing place. And now for the first time, there is a more diverse equality accepted in, in generally speaking, right? There's more diverse ideas being incorporated in everything from Hollywood to, to, to all fronts in businesses. And I think it's good and I think it's just the beginning and I hope it continues to grow. I really do. I like the idea that everybody's coming to the table. Let's hash it out. Let's figure it out. Maybe sometimes it's gonna be this way. Maybe sometimes it's gonna be this way, but let's not just say it's my way or the highway. And I think there's a lot of growth here. And if anything, you and I's relationship has been proof of that from the first time I met you to who we were back then when our babies were young and our relationships were young. And then all the nights we sat on benches in random cities talking about <laughs> bullshit that we didn't even know what we we're saying to each other but what we knew is that you were challenging me perspectively i was doing the same to you and we we're giving each other a stage to do it on and that's just it that's a beautiful thing and i think that's what is so kind of all encompassing rewarding in this kind of podcast zoom talk whatever you want to call it just sitting and talking and allowing people to see hey it's a real conversation happening in real time. You don't have anything prepared. I don't have anything prepared. We're two people trying to connect, relate, grow each other's perspective, grow each other's spirituality. And it always comes up good, even if the conversations are tough. And you and I have had good, challenging conversations before, as, as we've had with the group too. But it's, it's just good and healthy. We can't avoid – somebody was saying this the other day, and I was – been stuck on it ever since right it's so like we're we love it when it's good and life feels great and then we're like man it's so difficult and then the opposite moment is so defeating it's not it's just what hard feels like so this is what good feels like this is what hard feels like it's on the same plane you can overcome both things and grow from bo both things so what i say to myself now when and this is uh, as of the last month like when depression hits or anxiety hits or I'm frustrated at what deal didn't happen or what acting job I lost or whatever I didn't achieve or did achieve that day, I just go, this is what hard feels like. I can do hard. I've done hard a million times. And that or what if we reframe it and say, this is what not as good feels like? Exactly. That's perfect. And there we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. A shift in perspective and a shift in terminology makes it much easier to digest, right? So this is good. And the difficult time is not exactly what good feels like. But I know that if I keep pressing through the difficult moment, I will get back to that happy, good feeling. And of course, the yin yang of the whole thing, right? Like, how do we know what we love if we don't hurt yes. or hate or struggle or exactly. something sometime? This will never feel that good. It'll just be like, oh, this is my just plateaued level of good that feels like this. No, we need it to go like this because we're yeah. wild and we're weird and we're animals and we need to and feel And you think the about upset. like the tower card in tarot, the tower card is everything's falling apart. But it's never falling apart for you to fall apart forever. It's falling apart so something new can be created. So if every challenge and every difficulty in our life, we then reframe as to 
I used to think about this when I go through hard times or go through depression or whatever. I go, some, something good is going to come from this. I'd always try to remember that. Like, this is for a reason. And again, like, it's like with anything, is it a placebo effect? Who fucking cares? Right. Like, however you get through the day, if you can find the strength to choose to believe that hardships are there for your greater good, you will just, you will survive this life in such a more joyful, heart-filled way that why not, you know? And you have to make a choice. Like you yeah. literally, and Mandy and I, we, this is, if we get into anything, it's often about the choice of going, hey, I'm going to wake up today. I don't feel good from yesterday, or I'm going to wake up today. It's a new fucking day, period. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm dealing with things, emotions from yesterday, but I woke up today many people didn't have the benefit of opening their eyes today mm -hmm. and i ha i can go get up and fix how i feel by making a choice and right it seems like oh no internally i'm unhappy so i'm unhappy but mm -hmm. i know that if i make a choice to like you said let go of the 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 destructive feeling of of whether it be failure or or anything in between and go hey all right, this is what less good feels like. How do I, what can I do that's going to make me feel better? And then there's a list everywhere you go. It's on my Instagram. It's on Google. Anywhere you go, what can I do in nature to feel good? Get some light in your eyes, get a yeah. better sleep, drink some water, stretch, do something with your body. I don't know, take some psilocybin. Like there are so many ways to take a few steps into a different perspective. We just get stuck. And so- Look, Here's I, another good thing. When you were talking about um, how, you know, when your friend passed away that you were like, I want to sit in this. I want to feel this. I do think there is some benefit in doing that. Sometimes I think that it is not beneficial to just muscle through every negative emotion. I remember years ago, I actually working on a podcast with Kim, Kim Rhodes. Uh, I, I was having a very hard time and I was like, I just got to, I was doing all the things. I was like going to therapy. I was reading all the books. I was doing, you know, I was eating healthy. I was working out. I was doing everything. And she was kind of gave me the perspective of, you know, our, our emotions, just like the tower card, our emotions are all there to help us. You, you don't get to like um, vilify one of your emotions. They're still yours. They're still part of your experience. So I try to think of like negative emotions, like I do with TikTok. If I go on TikTok and just consume for entertainment purposes i go you get one hour because i know it's not good for me but i also know it's it's part of my daily experience i want this i want this right now i want to numb out i want to you know whatever they doom scroll or you know whatever rotten bed whatever the thing the kids are going <laughs> to these days um i want to do that and there's nothing wrong with that we don't have to be um you know, perfect every second of our day, but you just give yourself a little time frame where you go, I get to have this right now, even though it's not for my greater good, I get to have it right now, you know? And I think that there is some benefit to that. There is some benefit to just like allowing things for a short period of time. But I do think negative emotion is quite addictive because our brain is hardwired to think that negativity if you, if you focus on it, you will protect yourself, which is not true. This is again, back to psilocybin. Psilocybin will just help you rewire some neural pathways that have been hardwired because your nervous system tells you, you need to protect yourself. And you're like, you just have to go, you take this little psilocybin and you go, I'm safe. I'm safe in this body. I'm safe yeah. in this brain. I'm safe in this partnership, in this home, whatever it is. So Anyway. It's interesting that psilocybin can really give you such a perspective shift because it, it it indeed allows like a mental reset like nothing else that's out there. And and you know, look, I've been on, I've been prescribed drugs from doctors based on saying one sentence to them, and they give yeah. you know will happily give you whatever script you want. But then there's all this kind of frowned upon uh, um, you know reaction to psilocybin, but it's loosening up and the the benefit of that is society is going to going to benefit hugely from allowing just alternative perspectives and you know this country is uh, uh, the united states is so divided by region even right and like just like there's the north the south the east and the west and everybody's against each other and then you have political parties and then hey guess what 
everybody needs a shift in perspective and to allow space for everybody to exist. It's not really that hard. Just we need some rewiring. And mm -hmm. the way things have been done for so long doesn't mean that's the only way they've been done. They've been done that way because it worked once and people were scared to change it from what worked. It's it's everything. It's the fear of anything is because you don't know how it works or how it happens. That's why people are scared of things. And then it's comfortable to know that it's going to work. When I show up, a thing is going to be there and it's going to happen and it's going to work. And this crosses over right into even what I'm doing. Like I've been obsessed a yeah, little bit. Yeah, tell me what, what you've been doing. Like I've, I've seen a little bit on the Instagram, but I've I want been to know a little more about obsessed it. with kind of a healthy more sober protocol in life. And just because I was, you know, partaking in, in smoking pot and I was just doing a lot and I wanted to shift a bunch of things. I wanted to change 41 years old. I was looking at myself and going, ha, ah, I can do a little better. And then it turned into, you know, I'm finishing up March right now, every day, a cold plunge. Even when I was in Australia, I never took a hot shower. I only took cold showers. So I have been off booze, off pot, eating real clean proteins, vegetables, eating dessert every night, but I've been baking. I'm baking my way through a 30 day cookbook, that's all right. pictures. That's oh, going to be literally 30 days of no sugar added organic desserts and then protein meals for lunch and dinner that you can prepare real quickly that your kids like and the parents like, and I'm doing it as- I can't wait. As for fun, like it's going to be like a comic book of pictures and the ingredient next to the picture. So you don't have to do anything, but you don't even have to read it. Um, and I just want to do it because it's it's changing my life. It's changing my body. I feel really good. But the point I'm trying to get to is it's OK to doom scroll or rotten bed or whatever we say, because what's happening to me and I heard it said by, uh, you know, somebody on a podcast, a health podcast, and he goes, your protocols are giving your opponent or your enemy or your challenger the upper hand because while i'm so addicted to waking up at six o'clock getting in the cold water by 6 30 making sunlight in my eyes by seven drinking coffee an hour and a half going to bed this time not eating at this time doing this at this time i'm forgetting to loosen the reins on myself and have a little fun mm -hmm. and it's stealing joy from my life even though i'm receiving all these physical positives you know, Mandy's like, what, who is this dude? He's a psychopath. My kid is like getting in the cold plunge just to relate to me, not even because he wants to, just because he wants to feel like he's part of what his dad's doing. And then I'm going, oh man, you can't let anything be all encompassing and take over your life, even if it's good. You have to, you can't, and like you said, we were raised like this. We were compartmentalized to climb that mountain and never stop climbing and keep on going, but you can't. You have to dive down into a pool of jello and eat marshmallows for a day. Like you have to let go a little bit. And yeah, it's, and it's, you have to like dive into, we are still, you know, you know, we all have these sacred souls that want to ex experience pleasure. Yes. And whatever pleasure is, you know, as I work really hard, as I get older too, I, I moved through life for, for many reasons, I think, um, being someone who did not uh, subscribe to societal beauty standards growing up um, and someone who, uh, you know, as a woman, I felt like I had to muscle through life all the time to just fit in and to, I had to be like, I had to be a guy's girl. I always, that was the only way I felt safe is if like the men liked me. And now as I get older, I'm working really hard to ease myself into my personal divine feminine and such a big part. And, you know, as we know, men and women have divine masculines and feminines. I was just, I was living so, so much in my masculine, you know, up until really a few years ago. And I just, I got really exhausted and it just wasn't working for me anymore. And part of moving more into the feminine side is to really embrace pleasure. It's really yeah. to embrace ease. I think a lot of like the hustle culture that we are fed is just capitalism and a cute outfit. I think that just relax, just ease just sitting and looking at the sky, just whatever you want, do a doom scroll again, not great for your brain. So I would always be like, put a time limit on that, but eat ice cream, yeah. listen to kids, just watch kids laugh, laugh yourself, do whatever yeah. feels pleasure filled, not all day, every day, but right. like, you gotta have a little bit of it. 
Yeah, I on my Instagram thing, I'm kind of telling people, and I'm trying to show them, like, look, these are my triumphs and my defeats, and I'm not winning every day, and I'm not trying to win every day, even though I want to do well. And I and I I always say it like this: like you can eat donuts for breakfast and then a healthy lunch and a healthy dinner, right? And that you can think like in my mind, I go, oh, if I eat one bite of a donut in the morning, fuck this day, I'm gonna go smoke a joint, I'm gonna go on a long walk, I'm gonna go be by myself. Like no, no, you can have a not perfect decision into your whatever your protocol is and still continue to. To rise up or, or or go in any positive direction you want, it's again a singular perspective, and I'm on a think I'm on a journey that only has one path, but it's not. It has one little entrance, and then the path goes boom, and it's got all yeah. these little pieces. I think dogmas are what will fuck us. I think that being dogmatic is very detrimental to growth and and pleasure. Yeah. Um, I like having, as you said, like even a protocol that you're doing right now, if you're going, I'm going to do this every day for a month, it's like running a marathon. Like a marathon is not a pleasure filled experience. It is a challenge, but sometimes in challenges, we can find pleasure. Um, it's only when you're doing it to um, shame your former self, you're doing it as a, um, you know, a punishment for something that you thought you weren't enough of. You're like, well, I was a, you know, a shitty person. So I'm going to become a better person. Like right. what if we didn't shame the person we were yesterday? And we're like, I, I'm not going to shame that person I was yesterday because I want to do this challenge or, you know, run this marathon. Um, I think it's, I think challenges are good and important and they're great for strengthening many things. It's just when we're only challenging ourselves that I think we need to look at it and go, what if I'm actually pretty great right now? What if I'm a good person? What if I was just a flawed person in this world? Then that's yeah. okay. You know, I think that shaming ourselves is what leads a lot of people down the wrong path because yeah. we're constantly, either, either we're doing two things. We're constantly trying to be better, which is impossible. We're never going to be perfect. I mean, it's possible to be better, but it's never possible to be perfect. But also we're also maybe hiding it behind puffing ourselves up or having like stances on it that we stances on something that we refuse to shift in or living in a bubble and not looking outside the bubble, seeing other people's uh, perspectives and experiences. So yeah. I think shaming ourselves is never a good idea and dogmas is never a good idea. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a hundred percent guilty of, of doing that several times in my life of trying to shame myself into a new person with a new drive, with a new yeah. intent, because I didn't get the outcome that I wanted from whatever circumstance was, you know, its predecessor Same. to this person. Now I have to be a new person. Uh, and you don't, right. You can forgive your, your faults and then also like the positives you're 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 not a hundred percent faulty in everything you do you just you're seeking a change and it's really you're seeking your own perspective change and that's okay but you like you said you know not shaming our ex our ex self is really our important and also we're yeah. not i'm not the person i was yesterday and tomorrow i don't know who i'm gonna be i just am this right now and i'm grateful for this moment and that's where i want to stay you know i really want to be here i'm just here with brie right now and i don't know what happens outside this door and what happens next but like this feels really good and i'm proud of this conversation and i love this person and you know i'm living right now and so that makes me feel alive and so just to, you know sitting down and having these conversations with people i care about and people i'm interested in it's 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 been super healing in a way and i'm gaining so much from it because i sit down with you and we know pe people are going to watch this but also this is people are a fly on the wall in a therapy session of Brie and Matt, you know, like, I know. And we, you, for those watching have to know, this is not an uncommon conversation. No, for us it's have. just, we're being recorded for once. Yeah, exactly. And we, should, and we, and we haven't do done more. it in a long time to be fair. And but, even when we're at work, there isn't time to sit down for a whole hour and chat. Yeah. I think, you know, being, world. being back on the convention circuit with the team and with everybody is going to give me a chance to get back in touch with you and have our conversations and Kim and just everybody else. But it, it, it I robbed myself of thinking, oh, I'm so busy in Hollywood that I can't Ooh, force Hollywood's myself tricky to, one. 
Yeah, and then it's Ugh. not. It stole. It gave me financial support, right? I was yeah. able to pay my bills. But what I was missing mentally over the last four years, and not just because of COVID, but because of not having the ability to get back with my circle of friends, my sense of community, it broke me in so many ways. It broke parts yeah. of my marriage. It broke parts of my fatherhood. And you try to figure out your way through it. And let me tell you something, just getting back on stage and seeing you guys in here in LA and, and previously in Australia and just being allowed to be who you know you are inside and people don't judge you for it, right? We can be our pretty much our wide open goofy ass selves on these supernatural stages. We're so blessed to have that ability. It it fills you up, it fills me up in such a way that um it's really a natural high for me. It is a drug that call it dopamine or endorphins or adrenaline or whatever, but I need it. And I need the exchange of bodily contact and the communication of, of your terrible thing that happened to you or the great thing that happened to you. I need it from these people that I don't know. I never so thought- So have you seen on something. this, um, on Netflix, this TV show about centurions, I think? I did, the like Blue Zone people? thing. Yes, and they yes. said in that show, out of all that, because they go, so whoever hasn't seen the show, I'm going to give you some really poorly um, demonstrated Coles notes, but they basically go to all these areas of the world where people, most, most of the people, a large percent of the people are living to around a hundred, give or take. Um, and they're trying to figure out what they eat, what they're, what they, what, you know, physical exercise they get. And the number one um, thing that they noticed that all of these groups had was community. That is the number one teller of how long you will live. And I think about this for my friends, especially my friends who are Hollywood people, yeah. um, is that I don't want to say famous people, but I want to say Hollywood people, is that there is this feeling of I got to do it myself. And I think that that going back to what we were talking about, the beginning of the conversation, back to the mushrooms, even the mycelium is like it will fuck us. We yeah. cannot do things alone. We think that I just got to like, I do this all the time. Like, oh, I'm having a hard time. I just got to sit and I got to think through this. You can't think through things. You have to have people like yourself or, you know, like Kim, like Rich, that we can go, hey, I'm experiencing this feeling. Can you give me a healthy reflection back? Because I can't see clearly. That's what community does. And if we don't give that that to ourselves, we're going to, we're going to hoop. We're going to hoop ourselves. Yeah, you need community in order to survive in this life, and I, I'm so glad that you're back. I, I mean, I don't know what you've been going through personally, but I selfishly am just glad that you're back. I, and I'm so I'm listen. I am I am I am selfishly glad to be back on stage, and it is it is some part of it an extremely selfish endeavor. It's I'm up there for me, not all of the fans, but in exchange by being up there for me and letting me be outward and ridiculous the fans get this side of me they'll never get to see you know uh, you know uh, uh, on a scripted show or something like this and so it is it it is beautiful to have that outlet and then but that outlet fill the return from the fandom is extreme and then like you said the sense of community is it's profound. And I, you, I didn't think that my only sense of community and friendship circle was my supernatural friends, family, and fandom. It 100% is. I spent 15 years at conventions, two weekends a month with all of you guys. We've lost people together. We've had babies together. We've been on all the trials and tribulations that Hollywood career and parenting and all these things happen. And all of a sudden it's swept away and you go, oh, I can finally just breathe and be by myself and it'll be simple. And that in after 30 days is mm -hmm. it being in an asylum because your, mm -hmm. your sense of community has gone and you, you literally, somebody said this once and I've stole it forever. And I heard it a long time ago, but the only reason assholes are assholes. One of the many reasons <laughs> assholes are assholes because they don't have good enough friends around them to go, Hey, stop being an asshole. Yeah, you have always been that for me and me for you. And our circle goes to each other and goes, the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing yeah. that? Don't do that. And that is a strikingly important feature in having in a relationship to grow a whole 
spiritually whole human being, you need somebody to go, hey, it's like reading your lines, right? You could read them in the mirror 12,000 times, but then you read it in front of me or a manager or somebody, they're going to go, uh, maybe try it a little different. You it's need sometimes, connection. Right. We get stuck and minus the connection and you're not connected. And that's a shitty way to feel. Yeah. You're just a dying tree. Yeah, you're right. You're just a dying tree <laughs> in need of a mushroom mama to come sweep you yeah, up and change your perspective. Water. I love this. Um, I We've been talking for like an hour. We should probably wrap it up here. Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to go do PE coach soccer time with my son as he finishes yes. homeschool. Before we go anywhere, what's going on with you? I want, let's give people where they can find you, where they can yeah. see you, what, what you're doing. I know your daughter's doing something. Just let's plug away. Let's shamelessly plug away. Um, I don't think I have anything new to plug. What could I tell you? I'm in the middle. So I live in Vancouver and Vancouver, as you may or may not know, is a production town for, for film TV. So I have like an audition a day which is wow. not tell it's just means casting loves me which is great i love casting back but because uh productions will come to vancouver and shoot um legislation says they have to audition a certain number of canadian actors so i will have auditions non-stop that's why all my shit is set up here i had one last night i'm doing another one this afternoon but um so i'm in the thick of auditions which is fine i always think again when i begrudge oh my god i have to learn another nine pages today i go it's good for my brain this is good for my brain to learn things. Um, and then I just got back from LA where I obviously saw you. We had a convention and there's two things I've been working on long-term. One of them is a, a script that I wrote in 2020 with a friend of mine, Stephanie Young. And uh, there seems to be some interest in it lately. Nothing concrete, nothing where I'm like, you're going to see it in the big screen. But it's always fun for people. We we recently took it to Second Draft in LA, which is where you can take 10 pages of a script and have uh, professional actors read it on stage. And it killed to a oh. point where we're just like, that's us, that's us. And then people after they were, you know, coming up to, you know, I wasn't there. They're going up to my partner, Stephanie, but she videotaped the whole thing and uh, they want to uh, us to bring in some more stuff. So that's very fun. It's very exciting to put, you know, I do creative projects for the doing of it. I grew up in a theater industry where you made 10 cents in a cookie. So I'm rare. I rarely do things for the money, certain things, but not creative projects. I do them for the doing. So it's fun when you do something and people uh, like it. Other than that, um, I've been working on some music with Billy and Rich. And that's been really fun um, for potentially another album you know, TBD. And uh, yeah, you mentioned my daughter. My daughter and I both have cartoons on Netflix. She's on a sh show called Coco Melon Lane. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I love how you just say <laughs> me and my daughter both have cartoons. I think it's, so just this week, I was like, Macklin, just so you know, V does Coco Melon. And he was like, what? And so immediately I brought him to my manager's office and I was like, look, sit down and see if he can do voice work he yeah. wants to do this and so like you've inspired Shit. him v has inspired, inspired him to like and he's playing with voices he's singing all the trolls oh, that's songs. amazing like, voice work shit. is the way i would never put valentina into live action nor would she want to she's painfully shy uh and i didn't think she would ever be interested in doing voice work but i uh did a cartoon two seasons of a cartoon called chip and potato on netflix and the director um adrian lindsay he knows that Valentina, you know, is Mexican and they have characters on the show. They wanted them to be culturally appropriate actors for these characters and asked Val if Valentina would be interested. And I was like, hell no. And I asked her, <laughs> she was like, sure. And then she got the part and she, she does love it. And she auditions for lots of other stuff now. Um, but the audition process for a, a youngster is challenging because it's, as we all know, being an actor is 95% rejection. And uh, yeah. that's hard for for a little one, but she actually loves doing the voices. She also DJs. And so she loves like behind the scenes stuff. She is not, although she has, she's just started taking improv classes because I have a background in improv and she loves that. So who fucking knows? I try to paint her a picture of who she is. And then the next day she's somebody else. So I, I have no idea, but yes, you can see her on Coco Melon Lane. I am on Chip and Potato. It shows her on Netflix, I think. And then other than that, there's just, uh, Hallmark stuff. 
Are you doing a podcast with Kim? You guys got episodes coming? Yes, or what? yes, yes. We just put out an episode the other day. We do live shows at um, at the conventions now because it's the only time we can get together. We have our next convention. We actually we're doing three conventions back to back, so it's going to be a hilarious Kim Bree tour. We're going to go. We're doing a convention in Germany. And then the weekend following, we're doing a convention in England. And then the weekend following, we're doing a convention in New York. So we're just like, let's just pack our bags. I'm flying my in-laws down to look after my daughter. And we're just like getting the F out of town. And so we'll be doing a bunch of podcasting then as well. And yeah, I think that's about it. I love it. I love talking to you. You are one of the best, most whole people people I have ever met in my life. And I always appreciate you sitting down and giving it to me, you know, and we always give it to each other. And it's, this is a vital, these are vital conversations for growth and perspective. And I hope people take away some stuff from this because this is real people having real talks about real life and it feels real damn good. So um, until the next one, we should definitely do this again whenever you want. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Doing this podcast has been such a whirlwind because I just do it all myself. As you can see, it's just I'm I'm going to edit and get this up. And you guys will be able to see this and hear it on Spotify. And there'll be uh, the video will be up on YouTube with the full podcast and everything. And um, I'll break away some short clips for your Instagram. I'll send those to you and we'll it. see. Uh until until next time, be money. You are um, <laughs> be beautiful, and I appreciate you. Back at and, you, darling. And I love your family. Please kiss your husband on the mouth for me, and high yeah. five your daughter, and say bravo. Yeah. We are watching from afar, and when you guys are in L.A., you're coming to stay. We at are. We're going to stay at your house. Yes. Like we've we're going to be times. together. We're going to do mushrooms, not the kids, just the adults. No. We're going to talk about perspective. We're going to grow ourselves. We're going to challenge ourselves and uh, never stay too married to our opinions. I love that's it. Great. I love you. And I love um, you too. That's it. All right, people. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe.